Hey guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel. So I'm still in the process of fixing up my room. In the process of doing that, I found this massive bag which contains all my point shoes. Um, but I thought before I decide to throw them out or do something with them, I would tell you about the whole journey that is my point shoe journey because it, it really was a journey. Yo. Point shoes are obviously very significant. You're in them for hours at a time. And if they're not the right shoe, they're gonna they're going to make your foot look bad and you're going to be in so much pain. So I thought that I would go through all of these with you guys and this is insane. And this is not even like a dent on how many I've had and how many I've worn. Not even a dent. So for point shoes, like you can go through one a day. As a professional, you can go through a pair a day. It just it just really depends on you, um, how strong you like your shoes, etc. I definitely went through a phase where I was going through a new pair every two weeks. We'll get into that. And these things are not cheap. They're at least a hundred or plus dollars a pair. So it's crazy expensive. But when you're in a company and you're dancing with a company, they usually fund your shoes but like the sewing that's involved as well to just keep having to get new shoes all the time and assessing whether they're dead or not is just full on and if you don't know these shoes like you can't wear them forever they die and they get very even i have ridden dead <laughs> on these they will die and then they will wear out and you just can't you just can't use them anymore okay but let's go through these are the first ever point shoes that i got as a young dancer um these are block shoes and they're called serenes so block is the probably the number one maker in australia for point shoes and just for dancewear as an australian dancer you are generally told to go and you know get fitted when you're ready for point because to be allowed to go on to point you have to show that you have good enough strength to be able to do it otherwise you just get injured in it so you get to an age where and then you're strong enough in your technique and your teacher will tell you that you can Go and get point shoes. That time came for me when I was about 12 and I was super excited. Every little girl wants to go and get point shoes. So I went to the box store to get a fitting and they just, <laughs> so I have really wide feet and then they kind of go narrow at the ankles. It's just a genetic family thing. Anyway, so when they were trying to fit my foot, they really struggled because I would say that point shoes are mainly made for people with quite of narrow feet. Um, they don't always cater for people with really wide feet, really long feet, etc. So I just struggled. I must have been in there for like an hour and a half, trying on every shoes, every like every pair of shoes they had. The lady who was trying to fit me was just really struggling and it just wasn't a fun time. But anyway, I ended up with these shoes, which in, are an E. Like if you don't believe me about being wide, these are an E. They end up being really strong because they were just one of the only shoes that fit my foot properly, like in terms of width and stuff. So they were fine shoe, but I just never felt like I could really get on top of them properly. Um, so then fast forward to when I started wearing, um, I went back to block because after I had these shoes, so also I didn't really know the difference between what was a good shoe and what was not if that makes sense. So I just thought, okay, I'm gonna go try a different pair of block shoes to see if I can do any better. So then that led me to, these are all tied together. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, these, these. And this probably was in my second year point. I was starting to do a little bit more. I'd moved to performing arts school I went to, was doing more classes on point. I got these shoes, balance, uh, European Balance, which is also a block shoe. It's softer and I really like these on my foot um, because they actually they fit properly um, they looked nice let alone my first pair didn't really look nice on my feet and I really love these except for the fact that they were really soft for my feet that weren't that strong so I would go through them really quick and nearly like every two weeks so economically they weren't working that well and at one point I was wearing a similar shoe let me see if I can find it 
But yeah, I was wearing Heritage for a little bit as well. Um, but they were the same kind of deal. They looked really nice. I liked them, but they just, I went through them way too fast. So then I decided to go and get fitted another time um, because I needed a stronger shoe. And I got fitted with um, <laughs> Aspirations, which is also a block shoe. So these are my, mind you, I hadn't really branched out in the first couple of years that I was wearing point shoes. I never branched out from what was known and what was more worn by mostly everyone, and that was Block. I have a really love-hate relationship with these shoes. Um, no, I don't really love them. I just have a hate relationship with these shoes. And nothing against, this is nothing against Block. This is just purely based on my own experience. Um, these shoes were harder, yes. And the problem was for on my foot, they would break, so like pretend this is my foot, they would break like, you know, it usually breaks in the arch and then you kind of end up like this and it's, it's too much. Um, for me, these shoes, I was always like this, like I'm, it never catered towards my arch. So it never really gave me a good foot line. I think just because it just wasn't the shoe for me. I would get the worst pain on the side of my feet. Like I'm talking about like nearly wanted to pass out pain. And because I was starting to do more point work and everything, it was... <laughs> It was really affecting like my my work and everything and I would it would throb the side of my foot would just throb and I was starting to get like bunions because yes they did fit me but for some reason they just weren't working as a shoe and I felt like I was sinking I wore these for like at least six months and I just thought okay this must be how point work is it's just hard it doesn't feel good and I'm in so much pain it's until I was talking to my teacher about it and she's like no it shouldn't be this hard like I know you need to get another fitting okay so at one point I was so annoyed about these shoes not working and I really wanted them to work so my teachers had told me about this three-quarter shanking thing it's where you cut some of the shank out and then you tape it down and then it gives you a nice line it, it caters to your foot more so I thought okay this will make my foot look good in these shoes and it really didn't work and as well because I just like decided to cut it and then just tape over it this part of the shank would just dig into my foot and I would just always be in pain as well hence why I think I put a sponge I don't know what was going on with these shoes and this is where the saga begins uh the thing about Australia as well is that there are a lot of more like shoe, different types of shoes like internationally um, and yes we do get a lot coming into the stores but they're not always available in a lot of sizes and everything so to get some of these shoes we, I, my mom and I were like driving everywhere to try and find all these shoes so the second ones I decided to try were Capizio and they're like a US shoe and I just they just was too boxy for me too bulky and they just were similar to like one of the block shoes where I just couldn't get up on them properly and yeah they just weren't my favorite they do look really nice on some people and that's with any of these shoes they just didn't work for me oh then Grishko became the real rage there's also like all these like trends that happen where everyone just goes and gets the same shoes as everyone and I actually, these are Russian shoes. I had a lot of friends who were wearing them at that moment, also because they make them really quite hard. So they didn't break down as much as like a block point shoe did. So that's why everyone kind of gravitated towards them when we were doing more training. Um, the problem with these shoes for me was that they just, I still found them too narrow. They would hurt my feet a lot, um, unlike the side of my feet. And I also just couldn't get up on them. They wouldn't bend to my feet at all. Similar, I don't know why the, none of these shoes just worked. I think it's because a lot of them didn't really fit me properly. Uh, it was really hard because I was like still having to do point and do all of this ballet and with shoes that just didn't look good. The goal for a point shoe is to make your feet look as nice as they can. So when you can't get a shoe that does that, it's really, really frustrating. My mom and I decided to have a road trip, go on a road trip to like two hours away to Central Coast um, to go to this store where they had two types of shoes in stock. There was Energetics, which is also called Russian Point overseas if you're in America or Europe. 
and Gainal Menden, which is a shoe that is not like a conventional shoe. Most of these shoes are traditional shoes are made with like paper mache kind of stuff and like paste and they break down from heat and wearing them and all that. But Gainal Menden was a kind of new agey brand that was made using the shoe was the like actual shank was made using plastic and that's was meant to be a way of making them break down less and they were a little bit controversial at this point just because they're not strictly traditional it's, like it's harder to go through your feet as much as an another shoe because you're pushing against like plastic rather than just like anyway it's kind of hard to explain but um i talked to my teacher about this and she was like well if they work for you though at this point do anything like, end of my road with this point shoe thing tried them and of course like because they were uh, they they're an american brand they used to be made in new york i think they're made in europe now and they didn't have like the biggest selection available but they had enough and the thing with gain or minden is that they have they have um like five widths of boxes which is this part of the shoe so they had a box that was wide enough for my foot miraculously so they have sizes that are quite variable and they have a couple of different styles and they have a style as well that is kind of sleek which means that it comes down at the ankle which was perfect for me so with what um they had i ended up finding a shoe and as soon as i put them on it was such a weird different feeling because i'd never worn gain or mending and if you know if you swap between wearing gain or menders and traditional shoe it's a different feeling because you're just more like on top of your box so it definitely takes time to get used to but when i put on these shoes oh my life changed i was like these are it i got like the hardest shank because i was still at that point where i needed something that was going to be quite durable and i just fell in love with how they looked in my foot <laughs> nice for once i was so excited we're definitely they're definitely more pricey than a normal shoe but for me they lasted so much longer like a couple of months even now i actually still wear gainors and they still last me like a couple of months even at a time which is crazy for a point shoe because that just never happened but actually getting top of my leg which just improved my technique i didn't realize that for so long i was trying to turn not actually on point i was trying to balance not on point like everything changed when i found a shoe that I actually liked and I think that's a lesson. I'm not trying to convert you to go and wear Gainors because I've seen people who've equally worn Grishkos and everyone's like, wow, they look incredible or they've tried Gainors and they're like, they look disgusting. And so it's really up to you to go and just explore all options and don't just take one thing as, you know, people have a lot of opinions about things in ballet and they'll say, no, this shoe's bad, this shoe's good, this shoe... You won't actually know until you go and try it yourself. And that's what I've learned, especially living overseas. Main takeaway from this video is that I could have easily settled any time along the way. And yes, it took me many avenues to get there, but I didn't settle. And then I found a shoe that I really liked. I went to New York for summer school, so I actually got a proper fitting at the Gaynor Minden like boutique there. It was super fun. So I got a different shoe. It was like a little bit softer. Fit me a lot better because they had all of the shoes there. So then from then on, I started ordering that exact sh shoe when I was in America um, from them. So I, I already knew what shoe was like the best one for me. And at the moment, I'm still ordering the same shoe a couple of years later because it just works for me. I do also think that my feet have changed a lot since I started wearing them so i would actually be interested to see how my feet are in a traditional shoe now just just to see but yeah i'm definitely going to play around a little bit more now that i'm a bit older that was my point shoe journey i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know if you want me to talk about point shoes what i do with my point shoes um how i strengthen my feet for point work or just let me know um what point shoes you wear what was your journey like trying to find a shoe if you're a dancer and yeah um, I hope everyone is doing well, having a great, beautiful new year, and I will see you next time. Bye!